Hey y'all, so coming out of my last Meta Horizon Worlds desktop editor video, I got a lot of questions about importing assets into the editor itself and that there's not a ton of documentation online for that. So I'm going to cover that in this video. There are a lot of different types of materials and textures that you can pull in. To be frank, the process is really not good. Uh, it's based on naming convention within files and material names that it knows what to pull in. But for now, it's a step in the right direction, I suppose. So I can cover a few different material types very quickly, and then I'm just going to dig in deep on the one that I think that y'all will be using most, which is a double texture PBR material. What that means in double texture will be essentially that you'll have two textures. So you'll have texture A, which will be your base color. And in the alpha channel will be roughness. And then you have texture B, which will be what's called MEO. And MEO means metalness, emissive, and ambient occlusion. Um, texture A, just to mention it, is called BR for base and roughness. So this is the general setup of how we're going to show things today. I'm specifically going to be using Substance Painter, um, but you can easily do this in Photoshop. You can send any model out of something like 3DCC, so Blender, 3DS, Maya, etc. Um, all of them are viable as long as you have a baseline understanding of how to assign materials, how to name materials, and how to do an automatic UV unwrap. So really nothing crazy. As far as I can tell, this engine does not seem to support custom normal maps at this point, which to me is an enormous limitation. Uh, perhaps it's just not in the documentation. Perhaps it's just something that's buried a little bit. Um, but I have not found a way to implement normal maps yet. So this is the main one, as I mentioned, the double texture PBR. They also have things like single texture PBRs. So if you only need base color and roughness, this would be just called BR for base and roughness. And if you wanted to do a single texture metal PBR, meaning that you want to include a metallic value, it's essentially the same thing as the above. However, what you need to customize is the name of material in the FBX file itself. Needs to have metal added to the end of it. And what this does is it will automatically assign a value of one to the metallic. And that's essentially how the rest of them work. So there's unlit materials where the material has to have an underscore unlit at the end of it. Um, in that one, they just have B instead of a BR. Uh, and these abbreviated names will matter later because we have to name our files with this appended suffix in order for the engine to read it. Um, so as I mentioned, it's honestly pretty sloppy and clunky. It is not a, a pleasant experience right now, but it's at least a way to do this stuff. Um, similarly, if you want to blend alpha opacity, you can do a underscore BA file, which is base color plus alpha. If you want to do transparent materials, there's underscore transparent, so on and so forth. So there are a lot of ways that we can dig into this, but I think this is the material that most people will want to know about first. So that's what I'm going to focus on. So we have, again, texture A, which will be base color plus roughness. So that's the RGB channel plus the alpha. And then we have texture B, which is MEO for metalness emissive AO, which will be RGB, and then the alpha will be empty. So that is the idea. And inside of Substance Painter, I can go ahead and grab a sample. So let me go ahead and do that right now. So I have Meet Matte here. This adds other complexity if you want multiple materials assigned to the same asset. So just for simplicity of this demo and keeping it less than, than 15 minutes, hopefully, um, I'm going to open up a sample that only has one material on it, like the preview sphere. So now that I have this open, I can do a few different things. 
the first thing is to make sure that I'm going to have all of the values that I'm looking for. So I need to make sure that I have the color, the roughness, the metalness, the emissive, and the AO. Emissive for this is going to be zero. Um, but you can see I have color, roughness, metalness, um, which are the main ones that I probably care about. And then the ambient occlusion, not to turn this into a substance painter tutorial, but in the baked maps, I can easily turn on ambient occlusion. And I just want to make sure that I've baked those out. So now there's an AO assigned to this asset. If I go back into painting, I can then come over here and go into File, Export Textures. And in here, I have a few options, but what I really want to do is make a new output template. So I'm going to create a new output template and I'm going to rename this Horizon Worlds. And inside of here, I essentially want to use Substance Painter to pack my maps for me. If you're in Photoshop, this basically just means that you would manually pack your RGB channels, etc. So again, let's pull up our sticky note here. And remember that we have B and R, which is RGB plus alpha for roughness. So I'm going to say RGB plus A. And the RGB, I want to be base color. And I'm going to say this is the RGB channels. And then our alpha is going to be our roughness. So I'm going to come down here and drag roughness up, and that's going to be a gray channel. Next, what I want to do is add in an R plus G plus B plus A, because I want each one to have a different input. And then looking back at our notes here, I have metalness, emissive, and AO, and the alpha is empty. So we could even just do an R plus G plus B, but that's okay. So let's go metallic, gray channel, emissive, gray channel, and ambient occlusion. All right, so now we have our template set up. If I go back to settings, I can now change this out for Horizon Worlds. And I can see my list of exports are two materials here. I'm gonna go ahead and just make this easier on myself and do underscore BR and underscore MEO, since I know that that's how I need to append the suffix to these file names. So now that I've done that, I can go into list of exports and go ahead and hit export. Uh, I'm doing this again with a sample asset. So in theory, you've painted your own maps within whatever software you're using. Uh, the main thing is about how we import those maps and now that we pack them into the right channels. What I also want to do is go ahead and export the mesh itself because the name of the material is important. And I want to put this into tutorial and call this sphere. Uh, it does matter more what the material is named than what the asset itself is named, but just to make sure all of this goes to plan, I'm going to make sure that the material and the name are both the same. The one thing that you want to make sure that you do from here is to add in the name of the material before the underscore BR and before the underscore MEO. So I've gone ahead and manually typed in sphere and sphere and left those new names as they are. Okay, so now that we are here, let's check out our folder that we just output to. So again, we had our sphere, that is our base, plus our roughness with the roughness in the alpha channel. Then we have our sphere metallic emissive ambient occlusion. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize that and come over to where we pointed out in our initial tutorial video, the asset library. So you have the public assets that you can get into, but I want to get into my asset that I have now published. So I'm going to come over here and inside of my assets, I'm going to go to add new and I want to add in a new 3d model. Now, the way that Horizon Worlds handles these 3D models is that the textures are built into the model. Um, so it takes a bit of finagling to ensure that everything works correctly. And once the model is in, the textures are associated with it. I haven't found a very easy way to go in and actually edit values within Horizon Worlds Editor. Um, but hopefully that's something that they'll consider adding at some point. So now I can choose files on device. I can grab my Sphere FBX, my Sphere BR, which is a PNG, and my Sphere MEO, which is also a PNG. I'm going to hit Open and Import. 
So now once we've hit import, it's gonna say importing asset, allow it to finish, etc. We have this little clock processing symbol that's right there. And once that processing is done, I can now drag it into the scene. I'm gonna close out of this generative AI beta here. And then I just wanna change the scale to one, one, one. And actually that turned out really well. Um, the roughness, the metallic, this looks pretty damn good. So now you could come in here and you could add elements such as a, a light or something similar. So if I wanted to come into build, gizmos, let's say it's a dynamic light just for the sake of uh, moving it around and showing, take the intensity up to 10, color over to blue, something wild. And now I could move this around and we can see how that would play with our metallic item here. So really some pretty nice effects. If y'all want me to come back in and cover any of the other types of materials like blend, um, like fading opacities, etc., I can certainly come back and do that as well. But I think as far as a first dip of our toes in the water of how to get custom models that have custom materials or textures built into them, this has been very successful. I hope that y'all got something out of this and that you're as impressed as I am with kind of the out of the box functionality with the import. Granted, I want a lot more of that UI built directly into the editor instead of me having to hard code certain names of materials and files. But I think this is a step in the right direction. Let me know if you have any questions. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I hope y'all are having a great day and I'll see you in the next one.